Welcome back, my friends, for today's Mass, which celebrates the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As for me in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. We gather together in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we hear of God's growing in our hearts with us and planting the seeds of faith that we nurture and He nurtures to strengthen us to the heavenly kingdom. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God for His mercy and His grace. Lord Jesus, you call us as sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us as friends. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to this table of faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And as always on Sunday, we pray, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's response, the seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus you have prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening the showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing close the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Today's second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself will be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. 
We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And that not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will have life forever. Alleluia, alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, if you've been out near St. Thomas recently, you notice that the corn out here has jumped up high. And it always amazes me in every corn year because, you know, it's not very fun to watch soybeans grow. But I do like, I am fascinated by the corn because uh, the Peterson boys, uh, they come out and they plant it. And uh, it comes up a little bit and then they spray it and the wild part begins. It seems like it jumps up a foot. The day after they spray it, I don't know if you could almost go out there and you could listen and hear it grow. And then after we've had these several rains, it's grown, (laughs) it's already tasseling out, which I just find amazing. You know, and it takes really good faith of the farmer. Because, you know, here in Thomas, we have about 160 or so acres of corn this time. And, you know, to put all that seed out and just hope that something's going to grow. And knowing that all they can do is do that one spray when this corn is still only about a foot high and then let the Lord do the rest. It takes an amazing amount of faith and just to watch it grow. That must be how the Lord looks at us. You know, he puts the seeds of faith within us, but he is continuously watering us and feeding us with his word. He speaks about that very clearly in today's first reading. Talk about the Word of God filling our hearts and filling our lives and helping us grow, not just physically, but also spiritually and growing closer to Him. You know, sometimes we deny our own seeds and we forget actually where our seeds come from. It's interesting, a a couple times during this little quarantine deal, I've seen on Facebook uh, a picture of a farm And then there's a comment by somebody that says, and I I don't mean any offense to this person, but they say, I don't know why the farmer's doing all that. Most people just shop at Kroger's or Walmart or Myers or whatever the comment says. And it kind of gives you a little chuckle because, you know, us from the country, we, we know a little bit more about where that comes from. But it just reminds me of those seeds of faith. It's not something we can buy. It's not something we can purchase, but it's something that we continuously need God's mercy, God's love and grace to fill that in our hearts. The psalm says it five times today, the seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Now this brings up a good question. Are you actually good? Do you know the answer to that? The answer is, yes, you are good. Each one of us is made good by God. And 
it says in all the Eucharistic prayers, almost the last line of, of, of several of them that talk about God making everything good. Now, you may be looking at your neighbor, or you may be looking at some people in your house or wherever, and you'd be like, hmm, I don't know about that one. Well, you can change that thought right now because God made each of us good and holy and powerful and beautiful, and he wants us to grow. Now, it gets shaded over by sin. It gets shaded over by temptation. It gets shaded over by years of regret, years of guilt, and all kinds of stuff gets scattered up so much that we, we get turned away from God just a little bit. Now, can we completely turn away from God? Probably. But I think he follows us. And he's always trying to realign us back to the heavenly kingdom. He provides us with the nourishment and everything that we need to continue this journey. The word we've heard here today, the Eucharist which we'll receive spiritually, all go to nourish our soul and keep us on the right path. So as we watch that corn continue to grow, and in a couple weeks, some little ears are going to form, and it's going to start forming those ears of corn. The tassels are here, so now it's time to start that process. Who's in charge? God's in charge of that. All we can do is watch. For our own spiritual life, what can we do? There are some things we can do to work along with God whether it be scripture study or maybe even joining RCIA, even if you're a Catholic who's been a Catholic since you were a little Catholic, RCIA sometimes provides a jump start. Maybe it's uh, helping with uh, religious education in the fall. Maybe it's serving at Mass. Maybe some of these things that put you into the place of God that can help you and strengthen you on this journey once we get back. We're on the cusp, my friends, of a growing revival of the church. And we need you to be a faithful prayer. We need you to use your gifts. And we need you, meaning all of us, all of us use, all of us use to do our part and cooperate with the power, mercy, and grace of God our Father. Amen. Disciples in Christ, let us pray our words of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. In that cooperation with God our Father, let us now approach him with our prayers, confident of his infinite love for us. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, may the grace of God nourish them in mind, body, and spirit as they preach the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve us in public office, may the Lord grant them hearts of justice and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened with any manner of suffering, may God renew them in hope that brings consolation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered today, may the Lord bless each one of us 
and increase within us a desire to grow closer to Him in all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all those who have gone before us in faith, may they see the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this weekend's Mass intentions for St. Monica, we're praying for Rita Porter. For St. Thomas, we're praying for Snooky and Bill Newton. For Martha Ann Simpson and for all the people who worship at St. Thomas. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As always, my friends, we add our own prayer that is on the top of our heart today. For all these things, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, please hear all our prayers and grant them according to your holy will. For we ask this always through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine may become the share in the divinity of Christ. You humble yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray now, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and with all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today, let us pray Eucharistic prayer number three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas and St. Monica, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I love you very much. May you continue to go and strengthen in God's mercy and love, and peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our Mass is ended, my friends, we now go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.